Hi, this is John Philwark. I direct the Idea Lab at Ball State University, and uh, we're putting together a montage of projects we've done over the years that deal with concepts around deep mapping. Um, we work a lot with celestial alignments, restoring ancient sites. Uh, we've done a number of UNESCO sites. Um, this obviously is Stonehenge. Uh, here, the big element I would say is the connection to a database created by uh, NASA's JPL lab, the Horizons Group. And we have developed a couple of different means of uh, pulling this data from uh, either scraping it out so it's embedded in the project or also live calls if the project warrants it. Um, this project also goes through the phases of the monument. Um, you know, so you can look at different eras of construction from it being a, an actual earthwork to more of the stone henge we're familiar with um, to modern day, uh, it's modern day state as well. Uh, we worked with uh, data from uh, Pearson on this and used his interpretation and survey data of the site. And so this is all user selectable and toggle, toggleable. Um, it's really meant more for discovery and I would say more scholarly uh, interpretation of the site. You can toggle on and off different features like blue stones or other monoliths, that kind of things. Um, and, you know, of course, time of day, anywhere over thousands of years. So, um, and we've, done, we've worked on this project in a number of different game engines, uh, including CryEngine and, and Unity. Uh, this is a project we work with uh, Jim Conley on and the director of the Center for Middletown Studies at Ball State. And here we're recreating uh, conditions, let's say, in a interpretation of the ball glass factory and going through different mold making processes. Um, this particular scenario is, is pretty rich in terms of how you can interact and learn with different elements of the um, experience in front of you. So, you know, whether it's the furnaces themselves um, or you know, conditions of working in an environment like this or precise mold making tools. Um, you can go through um, and learn about the site in different ways too. There's a bot who's a docent and uh, he's one of the founders of the factory. He introduces you, welcomes you to the site. Uh, so there's that kind of AI element. Here we're showing a map so you can teleport around and learn uh, again with different kind of learning moments throughout. Uh, this was a project we did with uh, Bernard Fisher at uh, IU. And we've worked uh, extensively with him on a number of Roman projects. Um, this also obviously is dealing with celestial alignments and it's one of the largest, if not the largest, um, uh, let's say sun calendar, more than a, a, a clock, but it's actually more, more of a calendar idea um, of the ancient world. And it's, it's under about maybe 15 feet of modern Rome. So there's just a small, portion of this that was excavated by um, archaeologists, German archaeologists named Buchner. Uh, you can actually go down in a basement and see the small portion of it. Um, and so based on that and using our NASA data approach, we've had to extrapolate what this may have looked like. The dominant theory is that it's like, it, it just appears here that it's more of a meridian uh, construct. And here you can see uh, a, a drawing of the Buchner excavation. Also, this is with Frischer, uh, Hadrian's Villa. The interesting thing here, I would say, just to, for brevity's sake, is that uh, this was a problem-based learning environment where students would learn about um, practices in the villa, and then they would role play and welcome, uh, let's say, an imaginary senator or such, you know, coming from Rome. It's about a day's ride out, out here, about 20 miles uh, east of uh, Rome. And, you know, based on who, let's say they were a senator or, um, you know, maybe a part of the aristocracy, that kind of thing, they, they would be welcomed and treated in different ways in terms of which halls they would go through, which bathhouses, um, that kind of thing. Slaves traveled in tunnels underneath. Uh, also, the um, emperor's court had their own sort of tunnels that they went through for security's sake. And so there are different sort of villas within villas. And um, this project also, we developed a very extensive database uh, archive for this that had over 300 objects of artwork attributed to the villa. Um, and, but the whole concept was a spatial understanding of the site that would be imparted to students going through this. 
and uh, being able to walk a contiguous experience. So it was an enormous project. I mean, this is, I believe, a 300 acre site um, with, again, with hundreds of artworks attributed to it from all you know, various museum collections around the world. So um, all of that data was plugged into the uh, site and available here if you wanted to drill down and learn about which uh, artworks were uh, perhaps originally installed in, in uh, different locations. This is a interpretation of the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop in Dayton, Ohio. And it's extant today, but it's a uh, museum and it's very different. Um, it's you know, more of you know, a visitor center. So it has a very modern flavor to it, although the space still stands and it is across from uh, another more extensive museum. Our thought here was to create a more of a living museum where the viewer can be a headset and controllers. Um, by the way, this is available on Steam if anybody's interested in playing with it and it works with the HTC Vive. But you can come in and, as you see here, pick up any uh, object and inspect it and turn it around. It might be an invoice or a drawing or a letter between the brothers um, um, or any of the numerous inventions they had to develop to end up making the uh, airplane, the first flyer. Um, so we have a lot of their inventions here as well. Uh, different tools and you, you can see and explore. And some things are more typical as well instead of uh, actually known. We work a lot with uh, Adina Hopewell Mounds and Mississippian Mounds interpretations since we're in this area as well. And it's perfectly applicable to our celestial uh, alignment uh, procedures. And so here, uh, this is, a, I would say, in the spirit of a deep map, you know, we're looking at taking, you know, 2D mapping data, turning it into 3D experiences of different kinds, whether it's you know, driven by uh, topography surveys or LIDAR surveys, photogrammetry, things like that. Um, this also interprets um, how the site would have been uh, back in the uh, era of construction. So it was more of a clearing, generally considered to be a ceremonial site uh, and a, an observatory of sorts. Um, and so the land would have been cleared. Today, it's, it's all wooded, um, but this was a site that was 75 feet off the river and had a great uh, vista through the uh, canopy at, at that time. And so um, there were a number of different features across the uh, site itself that we included into the uh, piece. This is a application, a mobile application that we did as a prototype for a uh, walking architectural tour of Columbus, Indiana. And so we created 3D models of several important uh, buildings across the city. And the intention here was to create this as a prototype to do uh, further uh, exploration, which, which hasn't happened yet, but and we ended up creating a pretty interesting prototype, I think. Um, and here you can see a, a nice timeline mapping um, the development of uh, various architects' uh, construction projects throughout the city. Uh, Cummins, the uh, engine company, is down there and funded all of that. Uh, this is a project over in Cody, Wyoming, dealing with the uh, Buffalo Bill Wild West show. Uh, in particular, this exact installation is an augmented reality experience of a very large um, uh, eight by 13 diorama that we 3D printed. It was just a really like an architect's white model. But the idea here is to bring it to life using augmented reality and create everything um, as being interactive in terms of the source material. Like the, there's a lot of photography of the show. And so we used that and we showed essentially the paradata that came in to, um, that we used to arrive at our interpretations. And so different cabins, different features you know, that we actually had photography on, we, we reinterpreted them and located them within, um, within the site. The main key here for us was the electricians uh, because electricity was new and Edison did the electricity for the night show. There was a really nice elaborate uh, electricians drawing that located a lot of the uh, features within the site. So that was very helpful. This is something I did as a prototype for uh, David Bodenhammer. And uh, we did this uh, to show how augmented reality could be used again in a walking tour kind of configuration. Um, 
also walking through time. So you can go back, you know, here looking at Sanborn map era to uh, modern era and um, just uh, basically taking the city center's um, uh, monument circle site and being able to uh, either visit that in person. And here you can see there's virtual pins in the ground. The idea is that you can walk over to the pin and get the vista that the photographer took the photo from looking at the, um, you know, from the source uh, vantage point at the actual site. A lot of these buildings were demolished at different phases and built up again. Um, and so we went through sort of a scribbable timeline that would go through uh, three different main eras. So the horse and buggy era, the Model T era, and the 1950s era to today. And we showed um, the experience both in a collage form where all of the source material was distinctly available as photographs. So you can see that sort of pastiche of photographs that we used. But then we, in Photoshop, we created a seamless experience too. So it gave you much more of an immersive experience that you are there in that era of recreation. There's a lot more there to that too, but for time's sake, I'm gonna stop here and hopefully that's been a good introduction to some of our work.